So, Sean, welcome back to Australia. Yeah, thank you. Uh, how are you enjoying Sydney? It's been great. Uh, man, I, I love coming here. It's, it's, it's super fun. I always end up um, adding days on to my trip when I go to New Zealand to ride or do something, something like that. I always like put extra days so I come to Sydney and hang out. But um, gosh, we, we skated the bowl at uh, Bondi Beach the other day. Uh, that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was really fun. We basically uh, messed around and, and just had a good time. I wanted to surf, but it looked like way overhead, <laughs> like ridiculous. It looks huge, yeah. Uh, do you do much surfing? Uh, I love to surf, yeah, as much as I can. It's out of all the sports, it's the one I get to do the least. So um, I cherish the moments I get to go surf. I'm actually going from here to the Maldives, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get in some uh, some surf time. You know some Aussies like our own Golden Girl Tora. Do you get to ride and hang out with her much? You know, it's funny because I remember when Torb first kind of came onto the scene in the U.S. It was just, it was so surprising to see like a cute blonde girl that could snowboard well. We we're like all blown away, you know what I mean? It was definitely a very strange thing to have on the, we were all like, is this real? Is this really happening right now? And she was actually better than a lot of the guys. So it was, it was funny um, to, to show up and, and, and have a girl so talented. But yeah, I, I've been able to uh, hang with her and, and, you know, get to know her family and, um, yeah, it's been cool. Congratulations on winning uh, Olympic gold for the second time running in Vancouver. Thanks, yeah. How important do you think uh, the Olympics are for snowboarding? The Olympics are huge. It's just something that like, I don't know, there's no other event that can really like throw you in front of that many people. I mean, it's just definitely the world is watching. It's just that stage of, of you're no longer riding for yourself, you're riding for this country, you know. It, it definitely takes a step back from what you're used to originally. You're a part of a team, you do what the team does, you're, you're in this together. I don't have coaches normally, um, and so that was strange on its own to have coaches and people filming me and like telling me like helping me out and um, you know it's, it's just a different experience but uh, I've always found that the Olympics need snowboarding a lot more than snowboarding needed the Olympics in that sense because yeah I don't know how many kids can relate to like the, the, the toboggan shooting sports you know what I mean there was so much going on that that didn't really I felt make sense or appeal to the younger audience and and that's why obviously our sport went from I mean, I'd even see the first Olympics snowboarding on television when I was younger, and then and then the next one that came through um, really blew up, and the Torino was huge, and, and this one, I mean, we, we were second in ratings. So. Mm. I mean, that really speaks to what is happening with our sports being put out there on that kind of level. Your two main threats for the 2010 Olympics, and the only guys to actually have beaten you in the last year were Kevin Pearce and Denny Davis, and they were actually quite seriously injured just before the Games and couldn't compete. How does that incident affect um, your mentality for the games and how do you deal with it? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think everyone that steps out on the snow kind of assumes the same risks and the same thing. I mean, it's just like, all right, these are fun sports, but they're dangerous. I mean, anything's kind of dangerous. Driving a car is probably the most dangerous thing, but we do it every day. And, um, you know, you just do the best you can. You prepare yourself by... You know, you wear sunglasses in the car so the light doesn't hit your eyes. You know, you know when you're snowboarding, you, you try to stay within your range of abilities. And obviously when you're a professional like Kevin or Danny or, or myself, you have to constantly be pushing that boundary of what's, um, I don't know, what's a makeable trick and what's just too far out there. And, um, you know, Kevin's was an unfortunate accident where that's exactly what it was. It's just an unfortunate thing where he's trying to learn these new tricks and, um, I was told over rotated in the half pipe and just hit his head. He was wearing a helmet. He was doing all the right things. It was just an unfortunate um, thing to happen. I mean, I, I hit my face at X Games and like that could have clearly been the the knockout, broken jaw, like you know the whole deal. I just was fortunate to to get out of it in a in a uh, I guess a good situation. But I don't know. I know Danny's wasn't as as sport driven as kind of like celebratory kind of gone wrong you know he, he I was told was on a four-wheeler that crashed into a fence and uh, the driver broke his back he broke his some vertebrae and his and his pelvis and some crazy stuff like that but um yeah it's basically <laughs> kind of the risks you take but yeah it's definitely tough I mean those were definitely competitors of mine but they're friends of mine I mean there's definitely this built-up rivalry between Kevin and I because you know he was I guess the only one to really be beating me, he beat me at the, the European Open 
the one year and then once again at the uh, same event year before. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, it was tough to see those guys get injured. It's just like I don't know. You know, even as a competitor, you want everyone there. Yeah. Snowboard half pipes are now 22 foot high, and they're quite dangerous. Do you think half pipe is becoming like inaccessible, um, say for your average snowboarder? Mm, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't see 22 foot half pipes everywhere. I see them at the events, the contests. I mean, if you're becoming a professional snowboarder, you should <laughs> should start getting savvy with the the half pipe being that size because that's where it's going. But it's actually safer. I mean, there's there's more uh, there's more time. There's more transition for you to land on. Um, it's hard to put yourself in that mindset, but if you're trying to do a, you know, uh, 720 over jump this big, you basically get this much time to get it done. Rather than a jump this big, you get this extra amount of time. So if you, you know, basically take that same format to the half pipe, you get more time to complete your flips before you get back into the half pipe, rather than these small walls where you're trying to like cram in two flips to rotate, you know, uh, to get back in before you, you crash. I mean, it doesn't really help. That's why guys would get upset when, um, you know, X Games would have, like, the men's and the women's jump because the girls sometimes wanted the jump smaller, and it's just like, man, I can't even complete what I want to do over the size of a jump. But, uh, you know, I I'm glad that half pipes went that way, and I'm glad to see that, like, upon doing that, you you're able to now have a whole new wave of tricks. I mean... I've never seen snowboarding half pipe this popular before. You know, my whole career of, of riding half pipe and slope style and all these different events. I mean, to, to, to show up and see like hardcore backcountry riders at the half pipe watching the Olympics or watching, um, you know, the qualifying for the Olympics. These things are so exciting. Those guys were all there, like cheers and on, cheering us on and like surprised of the tricks we were doing and, and definitely, you know, it was like a fulfilling, fun time instead of just kind of like cool, you know, whatever. Steve Brown, the head snowboard judge for the Olympics, who's also an Aussie, um, commented this. We are very fortunate to have someone like Sean in the sport as he will force the industry to keep supporting pipe riders. Otherwise, pipe might eventually end up the same as Alpine and Border Cross and al almost totally be ignored by the industry. What do you think about that? Um, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, it's cool. I, I, I'm, I'm honoured. I mean, that's... that's, that's uh... It's definitely big shoes to fill, and it's it's not easy, I would say, to be in this position that I'm in. Um, and I'm thankful for the success and the and the career and the whole lifestyle. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously just go up and I do my thing. I mean, I I, I set the goal, like, man, I want to win the Olympics. This is what I got to do to get there. I need to, you know, um, you know, everything from tricks to how you eat to how you, you know, want to approach each situ situation and. I love to be, uh, I guess, you know, to get get a compliment of respect like that for for the achievements I've gone after. So that's pretty cool. If slope style is going to be in the 2014 Olympics in Sochi, Russia, um, are you going to give it a crack? Slope style is. If it is. Oh, it. Oh, it's all dang. I got so much work now. I got to do. <laughs> what are we sitting here for? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I've always, I've always considered myself as a slope style and half pipe rider. I mean, I've, I'm, I probably have more gold medals at X Games slope than I do half pipe for some reason. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to. It's definitely not the easiest thing in the world to do. I, I go to X Games even, and I have to do um, so much slope style practice that I don't even do the half pipe until way later. I actually have to go at night during the women's practice to get my runs in. Um, you know, is it is it convenient or is it a sick joke that I have long hair and <laughs> look like one of the chicks when I'm like, God, the girl is killing it, <laughs> like you know, <laughs> Tor is there like, <laughs> no, um, they're probably just giving me a hard time. But to actually schedule the amount of focus on one or the other, it's so hard. I mean, to be the best at one one thing is is a full time job at that. Should skateboarding be in the Olympic Games? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's it's definitely it's a cool thing to go to. Um, were we talking street or vert or? 
I'd love to see street in the Olympics just because it just bring out the like these creatures. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, not to say that we're all clean cut on vert, but it's definitely different. You know what I mean? There's like Andy McDonald and these other dudes. You know what I mean? It's not like the roughest bunch. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd love to see skating in the Olympics. I mean, just from my experience of what it's done to the sport and what it's kind of helped change and, and, and uh, bring about, you know, there's definitely towns now that compete for who has the best skate park. You know, Oregon's littered in, in skate parks. And you see that, like, when I was younger, it was my outlet. It was like what kept me from doing all this bad stuff. I was out skating every day, I was making friends. It was like a social activity. And I think people, you know, look at the Olympics and these things and, and they think that that's the reason why our sport really took off. But I don't think that's the reason at all. I think it's it's because our sport's bigger than a sport. It's a culture. It's a group of kind of open-minded indiv individuals that like, you know, they're into art. They're, they play music. They, they do different things. It's the younger generation. Um, it's kind of like we're Tony Hawk and those guys. Um, they're all older now and they have kids and, and those kids are, are definitely like, yeah, my kid's going to skate. It's my kid's going to snowboard. And um, there's a new wave of, of you know, people that are into these sports and into that lifestyle, the music and culture, and it's definitely grown into something massive. I mean, look at Oakley. They're supporting the fact that, like, you're asking me what this is? That's basically a campaign that, that lets uh, some lucky kid get a ton of money and have a whole year of traveling. Like, it's ridiculous, you know what I mean? Uh, can you imagine if you're younger to sit there and be like, wow, a company like this is going to let me cruise all over the world and give me a bunch of money and do all these things? I mean, what an amazing you know, place to live right now. You're out here in Oz for the launch of uh, your new sunglasses, the Holbrooks, with longtime yeah. sponsor Oakley. How did the whole concept come about for the sunglasses? Uh, well, basically, the name Holbrook comes from a, uh, a town that's like at the bottom of Route 66, and that's like a very famous motorcycle route for kind of like these outlaw uh, characters. And um, we thought it was such a cool name and such a cool vibe, and, and it matched with all the um, you know, ideas for the photos, everything kind of stemmed from that. And uh, I just thought it was so cool that we picked this outlaw town, you know what I mean, where everybody kind of go and hide out from whatever they were up to. And, um, you know, the glass is great. It's, it's, it's nice to have something that you're proud of, you know what I mean, to put out there. I, I mean, I wear the glass, I like the glass. And um, it's cool because Oakley's been, gosh, I've been with Oakley for years and years. And, and um, it's fun that the relationship slowly grown from just being a rider to actually making my own product with them, so it's cool. Are you ready to have your, so your like mind that? friggin' blown? Um, there it is. <laughs> no, we actually went with like this bigger frame, you know what I mean? So I'm on the airplane, I can just sit there, and stare at you. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm looking right at you. <laughs> so yeah. No, I, I dig them, man. They're fun. Especially with the gold, right at the right time. <laughs> The guy would land so flat in the half pipe, I couldn't understand how he would get speed to hit the next wall. He would just kind of like magically do these tricks and put these amazing runs together. And uh, um, dude, it's amazing. I can't even comprehend that right now, at least. It takes a person of a, a unique quality to kind of branch out and do their own thing. And I think that's what the sport is going to need.